Good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Arslan Sajid Raja, and I'm a PhD student uh, at Laboratory of Photonic and Quantum Measurement, which is led by Professor Tobias Kippenberg. Uh, this project was done in a collaboration with the Microsoft Research uh, System and Networking team, which was led by Dr. Hitesh Bilani. And on EPFL side, this project was uh, led by Professor Tobias Kippenberg. So the title of my talk is uh, Photonic Integrated Multi-Wavelength Sources for the Data Center. Uh, so the idea is to use like a multi-wavelength source that can help uh, uh, for, the, uh, for the optical data circuit switching. I would like to start my presentation by giving the motivation why there is a need of optical circuit switching inside the data center. So this is a typical data center architecture that people are currently using in which servers are interconnected with the help of electronic switch and also these small devices that are called optical transceivers. So these devices basically convert your signal from optical domain into electrical domain and also from electrical domain back into the optical domain. So these devices are, we use quite a lot of devices inside the data center, so they consume a lot of space and the power, uh, they are also kind of power hungry. And also these electronic switches, they are in near future going to reach the performance limit. And on top of this thing also there is an issue with the poor scalability. So people are looking into some alternative technologies that can help uh, to meet the future data center requirement. So one of the possible technology that uh, researchers are looking into this thing is optical circuit switching. So in optical circuit switching, people are using uh, light to, to connect to different server. For example, if this first server wants to talk to the last server, he will talk via green color of the light. And we need a one switching element. It can be a prism. So. Uh, I think most of us know that if you send different color of light through a prism, you get slightly different refraction. So there are many, many elements that we can use basically to switch different color. For example, array, uh, array wave guide grating um, and also semiconductor optical amplifier. So very first benefit that we get, there is no need of optical to electrical and electrical to optical conversion. So there is no overhead and we can directly transmit our information in optical domain. Uh, second thing, you can see this architecture is more flatter, so you have a much better intra-server uh, connectivity. And because most of the optical solution can be relies on the chip scale, so the port scalability will not be a major issue. And uh, right now, the data center are not using any higher modulation schemes such as uh, uh, QAM4 or QAM16. So with the help of this multi-wavelength source, we can also think about using wavelength division multiplexing to enhance the data rate inside the data centers. Okay, so before coming to the point why we need a fast optical circuit switching, uh, I want to just mention that one of the very critical component that we need inside the optical uh, data center is a multi-wavelength source. Uh, a very clear cut or easy solution is to use uh, these tunable laser because they are very mature in terms of technological advancement and they are, you can find them in market at relatively cheap price. The good thing is that by applying a small electrical signal, you can switch different color of the light. For example, if I apply 100 milliwatt, I can get green light, and if just change the current, I can get the red light out of uh, this laser source. But the problem with this thing is uh, you cannot switch between two color faster than 100 nanosecond if, you, if people don't do some kind of customization inside this thing. So why this 100 nanosecond is a good number, just to give you uh, an estimation, that uh, this graph shows the, the flow of uh, data packets inside the data center. So most of the data packets that are being, being used, in, that are being transmitted inside the data center have a size of 256 bytes. So if we take a data packet that has a 256 byte and we transmit it uh, at the rate of 100 gigabit per second, we need a 20 nanosecond time slot. So if we transmit this packet, so in order to transmit the next color, we need to wait for 100 seconds. So which means we have to wait for 100, sec 100 nanoseconds to send our next data packet. This is, we are not utilizing our resources properly. So in order, it's very critical to basically switch this data packet at one nanosecond or even lower uh, switching time. So that's where our collaborator at Microsoft, they came up with this, uh, this idea that instead of just switching the color on the laser itself, we can use an additional element to perform the switching. So you have a multi-wavelength source that is keep emitting the same, same color or different color all the time and use this additional element and apply some kind of uh, electrical signal to switch between different color. So just to give you more information, for example, we have three laser diodes that are emitting 
uh, emitting red, blue, or uh, you know, uh, yellow color. And if we apply a electrical signal on the first SOA, what it, what it will do basically, it will transmit the red light of the red light through this uh, circuit. And if we apply the electrical signal on the second SOA, it will transmit the yellow. And at last, if we apply an electrical signal on the last uh, SOA, it will transmit the blue. By using this trick, uh, uh, the guys in Microsoft already demonstrated that you can do a switching at one nanosecond uh, time scales. But the problem comes if we basically now think about scaling this technique for, let's say if we want to connect 64 different servers, what we need, we need 64 individual la lasers that are being basically controlled by individual current source. And you also need this small element that is known as thermoelectric cooler because the, the emitting frequency of these laser diode is kind of very critical to the current or the temperature you apply to these things. So first of thing, first of all, you have very big racks. So it's, uh, the size is very big. And also these uh, thermoelectric cooler, they consume a lot of power. So we came back to the original problem that we're trying to sol solve in data center to reduce the power consumption. So if we use this particular architecture, we will have a problem with the power consumption inside the data center. So there is a, a smart thing that we can use. We can just use one laser and coupled to this very tiny device that has a radius of 500 micron, uh, thanks to very high spatial confinement, so, and also temporal confinement. So it's mean like when the light is traveling inside this circular part, it, it doesn't get lost too much. What we can do uh, by using the nonlinear frequency conversion, we can generate some new color of the light. So advantage is following, you just need one laser, you need a small chip, and you can get many color of the light using one laser. We don't need like 64 laser to get uh, 64 color from here. And there's some other advantage that I will not go into too much of detail, like we can do very easy wavelength alignment as compared to the 64 laser, where you need to basically adjust the temperature on the individual lasers. So just to give you a very small, a very, sm a very small idea how we basically generate this optical frequency comb, we start with a single laser. So we use a single laser diode and coupled to this cavity that has a very high Q factor. Uh, so you can think about high Q factor, it means low propagation loss. So if you put this light, light inside the uh, waveguide, it will not get lost, you know. Uh, you will not lose too many photons. Uh, so thanks to some very strong spatial confinement and temporal confinement. If we adjust the power and the laser properly, what we see basically, we get some new color coming out of this cavity, thanks to this process degenerate for with mixing. If we adjust the laser and the power further, what we will get, we will get more uh, new color being uh, coming out of this micro resonator. So eventually what we will get, we will get this very nice comb structure that people are calling optical frequency comb. Uh, that can be considered as a equivalent of a distance ruler that I think everyone knows that we can use this ruler to measure the unknown distance, but this frequency can help us to measure the unknown frequency. So there has been a lot of application that I will mention some of them at the end of my presentation. Uh, these particular frequency combs are quite useful for opt optical metrology and for precision spectroscopy. For one of the state that are we are kind of super interested because uh, it has low phase noise because phase noise is kind, kind of very important if you want to transmit the signal or if you want to transmit the information. If, you're, if your lines are noisy, you cannot transmit information on, 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 of them, on, on top of your laser lines. So if we can somehow find a proper balance of dispersion that is, is a property of uh, the material that we are using and the non-linearity, that's also a property of material. What we can do, we can excite one particular state of optical frequency comb known as dissipative curve soliton. So inside the cavity, what you will see, you will have a pulse in time domain that is propagating inside the cavity. In frequency domain, you have uh, these lines that are very well separated, and this separation between line is basically governed by the size of your cavity. If you make a very small cavity, the line will be uh, will be very far apart separated, and if you make a small cavity, they will be close to each other. And uh, if uh, also this line to line variation is very, very small. So you just need one laser and you can get maybe 150 laser coming out of uh, this tiny device that can be used for switching and data uh, for the transfer information. Okay, so from this slide onward, I will start explaining a little bit uh, 
uh, the experiment that we have done in collaboration with the, uh, with Microsoft Research Cambridge. So what we did basically, we use this micro resonator. Okay, the figure is not very clear. So, but here you can see we use this micro resonator that was coupled to a fiber. By coupling this laser into this micro resonator, what we got we excite a soliton state by adjusting the laser frequency and the, uh, also the the power. Uh, the power was not enough to perform different uh, operations such as switching a data transmission. What we did basically, we did the post amplification to increase the power in this comb line. So we sent through this small amplifier to increase the uh, the power in these uh, comb lines. So then we basically picked this comb line individually by using one element that I will, exp I will explain in the next slide. So first we basically generate this soliton microcomb state and then we picked one line using this AWG, this also known as array, uh, array waveguide grating. So we pick one line out of this optical frequency comb and send through this switch. So if you remember, we are using the semiconductor optical amplifier as the switch. By applying a control signal, what we can do basically, we can turn on and off this signal. So if you see that we can turn on and off this signal at less than one nanosecond or 500 picosecond. So that's kind of already fulfilled our first goal that we wanted to achieve in this project to switch signal between uh, at less than one nanosecond. We did similar kind of, uh, you know, uh, experiment with more than 60 comb lines that I don't want to go through in this presentation, but these, all these lines basically we can switch at uh, less than one nanosecond. But for the actual experiment, what we want to do, we want to basically switch between different comb lines. So what we, uh, in the last part, we picked only one line. Now we picked four different comb lines coming out of this uh, micro comb and sent through these four SOAs and switch between four of these comb lines. And we needed to make sure we can switch at less than one nanosecond. So the idea was basically we were able to switch uh, channel 42, channel 44, or channel 46 and 48 at less than one, on one nanosecond. So, so that's already shows that okay, this system is kind of uh, very uh, usable for the for performing the switching uh, inside the data center. But switching is not in, is not only the requirement that we need to do. We also need to put some information on top of this thing because inside the data center you want to transmit the information, not only switch between different comb channels. So then after switching, we put some some data on top of this thing using. Uh, this uh, Max Zender modulator. So we used two different uh, modulation format, this non-return to zero and also this PAM4. So we did like 25 gigabit per second and 50 gigabit per second uh, transfer, tra uh, sorry, data transfer using, uh, along with the switching. We were able to achieve, uh, uh, you know, uh, this uh, performance below forward error correction. I think around for 11 dBm for the NRZ and I think 7 dBm or maybe 9 dBm for the uh, PAM4. Now, we know we can use this soliton microcomb to perform the switching. We can also transmit the data. The question is, can we reduce the size of this architecture? Because what we use, we use this, this particular very bulky device to separate the comb channels. And also we use this very bulky semiconductor optical amplifier to switch different lines. So the idea was uh, to make this system more and more compact such that it can really be utilized inside the data center in future, you know, maybe next five or 10 years. So our colleagues in Microsoft, uh, basically they designed this AWG. So you can see this particular device is just integrated on this small thing that has a size of two millimeters. So you're going from 30 centimeter to two millimeter. And also you are integrating these 16 small butterfly packages on this tiny part here. So you can just basically, you made your system very small. So this system is kind of doing the same thing. So you just put your soliton microcomb inside this AWG, this split your, your different comb channels, and you can switch using this semiconductor optical amplifier. So we performed a similar experiment and we showed we can perform the switching that you can see in this figure that we can switch between different channels. We can also transmit the information. So we solved the problem of switching, did the data transmission, uh, data transmission, and we also showed that we can reduce the size of our architecture, you know, uh, to let's say six millimeter or six millimeter by eight millimeter. The question now comes about the power because that's, an, that's a very critical parameter that we need to think about uh, while implementing these device inside a data center. So first what we thought we can use 
like these small com generator and give it to each server. Like this com generator goes to the like this server and uh, we make one more com generator and put it on the last server. But in terms of power, this is not very efficient. What we will get like 10 watt per com system, like electrical power consumption per com system that we are consuming. And it's not acceptable for the data center. And also, OSNR is not a problem because I think you have 45 to 30 d 35 uh, uh, dB. So OSNR is like optical signal to noise resolution, which is also very critical if you want to transmit the information. Uh, information lower the OSNR, this means you will have problem detecting your signal. So what we thought about basically, because we know we can generate one comb out of uh, this small ring, we can use some amplifier to basically increase the power in these comb lines and start splitting these comb lines. To we start giving this uh, basically the part of these combs to different server. So it's like a split. You have a central comb system and you start splitting it to the all server. And now your power consumption goes down to two watt, which is kind of acceptable, uh, acceptab acceptable inside the data center. And we also don't degrade too much OSNR. Right now we are limited by this optical amplifier. So we think basically now uh, we, we did the s switching, we did the data transmission and we also did some uh, power analysis to show that this technique has certain, you know, uh, uh, it can be implemented inside inside the data center after optimizing certain parameter in our architecture. Okay, so one thing I just want to say before concluding my presentation that this particular architecture is not just limited to the optical circuit switching. You can use this particular uh, soliton microcom to transmit 25 terabit per second that our our group has demonstrated uh, uh, along with the team of Professor Christian Kuz from KIT. There was also some demonstration of optical imaging uh, with the team of size, and where mo more recently we also showed that we can use this uh, uh, soliton microcom to do the lidar ranging. So the potential is there, uh, not only in the technical application side, but there is also some kind of scientific application that people are trying to explore using this architecture. Okay, so I skipped many things in this presentation because I think uh, my audience is uh, uh, not from the physics background, but if you're interested, please uh, go through this paper that was published last year in Nature Communication. And also I would like to thank uh, Swiss uh, Joint Research Center for funding this project for last uh, three, years, three years. And the guys from the Microsoft, especially Hitesh Bilani, Sophie and uh, Kai, and also Paolo and uh, some guys in e at EPFL who were kind of very closely involved with me doing this experiment. So if you have, if you have some question, I would like to, your, I would like to take your question now, yeah. Thank you very much. Uh, any questions? So I, uh, I want to ask, now that this project has finished or is about to finish, do you have uh, plans further in, in, in the group to continue sort of along this line of work and look at applications of your technologies in the data center? I think for the, from the point of Microsoft, you know, I think they already kind of uh, showed that they can do mm -hmm. at the chip scale level. Now I think the ball is in our court mm -hmm. to make sure that our architecture is also very small, uh, is very compact. So I think two years ago there was a one paper, sorry, I, I don't have the slide on that thing. We can also kind of show very similar kind of architecture. Mm -hmm. So we don't need a laser that is very bulky or something. You can use these, uh, you can use this type of chip that is, that is a laser. You mm -hmm. couple to the chip that we are basically fabricating at EPFL. And it's also a commercial technology. Mm -hmm. So you just join these two things, combine with this thing, you will get a very nice uh, system that you can use inside the data center. Mm -hmm. Even but it will be like very long term project if you can make all these three component on the same uh, mm. on the same chip for example the laser we need it can be made on the same chip mm. so if you use the laser you use the silicon nitride microresonator you can perform everything on a, a millimeter scale level okay. and for sure there is a, there is a, there is many things that we mm. can do to improve and also think about implementing this thing inside the data center mm. yeah okay so data center is an interesting scenario uh, uh, that that you will explore even beyond this collaboration. Yeah, I think for mm -hmm. sure. I think for from for for us as a as a scientific uh, research group, we are always looking for some new application. If you see here, I mean, uh, we are always trying to make sure the things that we are doing it get implemented in certain uh, 
uh, application that are useful to scientific community or for the general audience. Any other questions? Okay, so let's thank the speaker once more. Okay. And